Yo, what's going on everybody, man? Stady 180, and as you can see on the screen right now, we created our own Monopoly board for NBA 2K19. And I'm super psyched to actually bring you this series. First of all, I have to give a huge shout out to Shake and Bait. I'm gonna put his link down in the description below, but he was actually the first YouTuber to give me the idea to do this. He did release three episodes on this, and I thought to myself and be like, do you know what? It's actually something that I found really interesting and it's also used as a challenge for 2K19 because you're probably so used to seeing squads that are just known as God Squads filled with Galaxy Opals, but you probably don't see too many just unique and random generated squads. I know there's like budget ballers and everything out there, but I thought to myself, do you know what? Let's create a team based off a Monopoly board. And here it is, this is our creation. And before we get into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could smash that like button down below. If you are new to the channel as well, make sure you click that subscribe button, turn the notification settings on because I'm really looking forward to this series. I think there's a lot that we can add to it and by no means or necessary am I saying that it's 100% perfect right now because it is really gonna come down to you as the fans and you know the viewers to actually change some of the rules regarding this series. I want it to be part of your series as much as it is mine, but without further ado, I am gonna kind of explain the board and then explain the little rules that are down below. To take a look at the board, I did wanna keep it very similar to the old Monopoly game and I don't wanna to spend too long just explaining kind of each property space because I don't want this video to be a 20 minute video, but primarily what I've done is I've tried to keep it the same whereby the bottom row is not really the best property, so I'm not gonna have the best cards that you can acquire from it. Let's say I rolled a, a, a seven, then I would land on that draft day. And then according to that property, I would follow the rules, so to speak. And I would just make my way around the board, adding new players to my Monopoly squad, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. Once I have my team set, we're gonna take on a random 2K19 player in the My Team Unlimited. And from that, hopefully build a winning team that can carry us through to the 12 and 0 series. But it's now time to explain the rules. So I wanted to start out keeping the rules just pretty, pretty straightforward. So basically every time I roll, I get 100 MT per roll. So if I roll a seven, then I would get 700 MT, so to speak. I'm looking at changing that a little bit later on, but I figured at the start, you know, 100 MT is probably a good starting point. Additionally to that, I am entitled to three rolls per turn. If I do roll a double, I'm permitted an extra roll. Same rules apply. If I do get three doubles in a row, I end up straight in jail. Now, I don't want to go to jail. If you do go to jail, my whole team resets. I mean, they go back to all bronzes. The next thing is that at any point in time, if I land on, say, like Emerald Estate and I roll a nine, any MT that I have acquired, I'm able to purchase a player from the auction house for that allocated amount that I currently have within my bank. The next one I've already explained, which is the going to jail. Definitely don't want that to happen. And it would suck if it happens in the first kind of two rolls or something like that. I, I don't know. Like if I can somehow get there, I don't want that to happen. The next one is that any MT that I earn from my game stacks up. So if, for example, I earn 1200 MT in the game, then that will just add on in terms of the next video and towards my total MT. I thought I'd keep that, you know, in, in then being able to buy players and try and bolster my team because starting off with all bronzes, I know it's not gonna be ideal. The next one is that any part in time where I land on a bank deposit, all my money disappears. So if I have accrued, say, 4,000 MT, it just basically resets to zero. I do want to have a couple of them, including like the downgrades. Otherwise, I'm just only going to be upgrading my team. And if you remember in the old original Monopoly game, there are certain things that you don't want to land on, including the tax. Lucky last is if I do win a game, it permits me to one extra roll. Now that extra roll will take place in the next video, so to speak. That way I'm not just rolling consistently throughout it. But without further ado, we are going to get into our very first dice roll. And as you can see, I have two dice, well, one in the other hand, but we're going to start out we're gonna get a quick shake of the dice. Hopefully we start out with some heat because I'm super excited as you can tell from my face, but we start out with a seven first of all. So if we do some math, man, we're moving seven. We're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we land on the draft day. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we mean by this draft day pack. Okay, so we're at the draft day. So basically how this is gonna work is I'm gonna take a look at one of the bench packs. They really not gonna have the best players. So I'm just gonna choose the captain as the point guard. Now this will actually take me through to choosing. So I choose one pack. I'm gonna choose this one for example. Now the best card or really any card that I get out of these, I can actually add to my lineup. So if we flip all right now, you can see that we have players like an Emerald Isaiah Thomas as well as this Emerald Trevor Ariza. 
Unfortunately, I just think I've sold my Emerald Trevor Eraser. And because I don't have any EMT in the bank, it means that I can't buy the player. So I think right now we are going to take this Emerald Isaiah Thomas and hope to upgrade our team. So to start out with an Emerald Isaiah Thomas, I mean, probably not the best player who you want considering he's so short, but at this point in time, any upgrade is an upgrade. Time for our second roll now. I'm hoping that we can kind of get a big roll as we end up. Yo, we've just rolled a 10. Unfortunately, it's not a double, but if we move, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've landed on the bank deposit, which means that unfortunately, we've just lost all our MT which if you do some mass is probably close to about 1700 MT. So not really the best right now. That will leave us with one extra roll. Hopefully we can continue to work around the board as we end up rolling. Okay, it's a nice low lumber. A low number is what I'm trying to say. We only got a three. We move one, two, three. Okay, so we end up with a player of my choice. If you think about that, it basically means that at any point in time, I can add any card who I want. Because this is the first video, I'm not going to actually just add a Galaxy Opal like straight off the bat. I kind of want to add a player who might fit into my team. So if we go over to the 2K19 screen now, we'll have a look. So a quick look at the team. You can already see I've added in the Emerald Isaiah Thomas. And in terms of any position that I'm looking to upgrade, I think I'd probably want to add a center, maybe even a small forward. I do have uh, Zhao Kui, the center, who is quite big. I mean, he is standing at seven foot one. I might look to actually change the small forward. Now, as I've said, I don't really just want to be adding a Galaxy Opal for no reason. I probably might start off, let's say, with a Sapphire for now. I think that's going to be the easiest way just to actually upgrade the team. And this poor George card could be pretty filthy adding to the lineup as well. I'm probably looking for someone who can actually shoot the ball. And take a look at this Nick Batum. He does have some pretty good stats. The only reason with the poor George is that he was a pretty good defender as well. But if we are continue to take a look, I mean, there are so many cards who we could actually add who would 100% bolster our team. That Jason Tatum card is pretty good as well. But I think what we might look to do is add this Corey Brewer. He has a three-point scoring attribute for him, and he's a pretty good uh, perimeter defender as well. So I think we're going to add him in. And this is our lineup coming towards our first game. Now, you'll tell you look at this insane dude. As if you're going to win a My Team Unlimited game with only an Emerald and a Sapphire. This is what the Monopoly is going to do. Every single time that we bring a video, we're going to upgrade this position and upgrade teams and everything like that. So I'm pretty hyped for this. We're going to get into our first game. So it's now time for us to see who we're coming up against. And I guess I'm kind of relieved that there's not an All Galaxy lineup, but still coming up against Emeralds. And I bet my opponent's thinking like, dude, how is this guy only have an Emerald and a Sapphire? So going to be an interesting game. I just hope that we can actually make it close. The time for the tip off and we are coming up against an Emerald Dwight Howard. So hopefully we can actually start the tip off with a win as we do. And as I said, hopefully we can actually just have a pretty good series and actually kind of make it a little bit closer <laughs> than what it's meant to be. But we're starting out. Look, I think the, the biggest advantage that we're going to have is probably going to be this Emerald Isaiah Thomas as we're going to take a nice little step back. Start out with a missed shot. I have a feeling that's how it's going to go the entire game, but hopefully we can just make it closer than it's meant to be. All right, we've got Isaiah Thomas with the ball. I think we're just going to try and settle this down a little bit as we get a nice little inside lap. That's going to remove his cold badge. That's what we need to be doing the entire game. So I've just brought on my bench, and this lineup is entirely all bronze. So I don't know how we're going to go as we get a nice little lap. I'm a little bit surprised they're up 6-1, but hopefully we can keep it going. We are just absolutely clamping up on defense right now. Like, I don't think we could play defense any better, as hopefully we can translate this to some easy offense, but having these bronze players is so slow, as I don't know how we go in for an absolutely monster jam. That's insane. Yo, our defense is just out of this world. If we can continue this, we're going to absolutely have one of the cracking games of our life, and we're pretty much playing with an all-bronze team. Time to see what our free throws is like with bronze players. It's pretty bad. Like, we definitely need to try and get this win to try and bolster our lineup as we make one of the two free throws. But if you take a look at the score right now, I never thought it'd be going this way. But the fact that we're just playing lockdown defense, we're going pretty well on the offense as well. Hopefully this can translate to an entire game. As if we can continue playing some lockdown defense right here, my opponent is just absolutely being clamped up right now. He's being forced to take a lot of those jumpers. And then from that, I'm hoping that we can actually run out into their transition. But as you can see, we just have no offense. There is no speed in our team whatsoever. 
Hopefully we can actually kick it up. Give it to Jonah Bolden, man. Put it in the Australian. Put it in. Kick it back out. Oh, that is going to be an absolutely missed three as we make an open three with Jared Bayless. My opponent. Yes, I thought he was going to rage quit for a second. Thought he was going to rage quit. We're up 12-1. So we have Jared Bayless running our point guard position right now. See if we can actually throw up a lob. <laughs> no, we can't. As we're hanging on the rim, I'm worried it's going to be a three-second call. But if we can actually get a final basket with Jared Bayless, hopefully that will extend the lead. We do need to generate some offense. So hopefully this uh, Jared Bayless can do that. Down as we kick it into Jonah Bolden for the inside slam. I will take that. Yo, our defense is honestly just out of this world right now. Like, I don't understand how my opponent... He's not able to make a shot, particularly when his players are just a lot higher rated than us. As can we throw up a lob, actually? Yo, we're throwing up a lob to bronze players. Yo, Isaiah Thomas should be able to burn with his speed. As we go in for the nice little lay, I'm definitely going to take that. All right, so we only have about 18 seconds to go, and I think I'm just going to get the ball straight into Corey Brewer's hand. We're going to see if we can actually call an isolation. Hopefully get a last-second shot here, whether or not we go for the three ball or something else. But as of right now, I am definitely going to call the pick and roll in. And we do have Isaiah Thomas, y'all. Isaiah knocked that three board down. That is absolutely beautiful basketball. So my opponent's cut the lead down to about 11. He's doing pretty well as of right now. As you can see, his uh, Emerald Dwight Howard actually has activated takeover. But with offense like this, as or oh, how we missed that end one, I don't know. But going back to if we can keep running pick and rolls, we should do quite well. And I just realized, I think I have the world's worst free throw shooter. We're going to kick it up. I see Lance Thomas trailing, but... We're a little bit slow on offense. Yo, Jared Bayless is open right at the top. He's wide open. And as you can see, having a bronze player doesn't help trying to generate shots. But hopefully we can actually get a stop here and get back on offense. Maybe just continue running some pick and rolls. Yeah, there is no way that Dwight Howard has just absolutely taken. What do you do? Like, what do you do? He's actually pushing players out of the way to get his shot going down. Start of the fourth quarter. We are up by 10 right now. Hopefully we can extend the lead to 12 as we are just absolutely throwing down a posterizer with a bronze card, might I add, as we finish the end one. Yo, that is absolutely insane. Yo, I, I just, I, I cannot fathom how we did that. As we, uh, can we go two of two? Yo, this bronze card is absolutely taking over right now. He's just throwing down two Huge posterizers over my opponent. All right, I definitely thought that this Corey Brewer card was going to be a huge addition to our lineup, but in this situation, he's not really doing too well. But hopefully, we can get a nice little lap as we do right there. I don't know what I was doing with the chair trying to swivel. Hopefully, that the ball just goes in, but we're still up by 12 with around three minutes to go. We need to continue playing some good defense. Another rebound for this Zhao Key card. Your Corey Brewer, you are a three point shooter. Three-point shooter, and he is unable to make a single three-point shot. I don't know what we're doing right there. Shots that are missing are just killing us right now. Absolutely killing us. As we take a look at our energy levels, they are still pretty good, but let's see if we can get Corey Brewer actually running into an open shot three, as we will just take it in with Isaiah Thomas there. I think my opponent was looking for that kind of like kick-out three-point shot, but I'll go in every single day. Yo, I see Corey Brewer open. Can he actually hit a mid-range? No, he can't. He's gone ice cold trying to shoot from the field today, regardless of whether it's an open shot three or a mid-range. And we're just giving my opponents easy transition buckets. But with a minute and a 15 left to go, I could play smart here and actually just look to kind of wind down the clock, which I think is primarily what we're probably going to do as, yo, we kick it into Jason Smith. Get Emerald uh, Dwight Howard reaching as... How is he missing that? Yo, how do you miss an open shot bucket right under? And yet we foul on the other end. This is fun. This, like, it just gets frustrating because you're probably so used to playing with, you know, pink diamonds and diamonds and galaxy opals. And then you drop all the way to the bottom with bronze players. And this is the result that you get. But hopefully we can actually carry on and get the victory as yo this card is moving so slow can we get a pick and roll operating as of right now isaiah thomas dance on them son and i think that's just ice the game right there i am going to show my opponent some respect i'm just going to run the clock down gg to him we do take a victory in our very first monopoly game if you take a look at that lineup difference my opponent was just running with emeralds and golds and all sorts of stuff i only had two cards that were better than a bronze 
the Emerald Isaiah Thomas, and the Sapphire Corey Brewer. So we definitely pulled that victory out from our behind, and I will definitely take that. Let's jump into the box score and actually see who won the game for us. So here is our MT total at the end, and as I said, every game that we play, that MT is going to actually contribute towards our total. So 944 MT is always a nice starting point. Let's see in terms of the team comparisons. We shot 43% from the field. My opponent only shot 35. We both only made two three-pointers, which I mean, let's be honest, we didn't have the best cards in the world. But 26 bench points for us. We also had 11 offensive rebounds. We had seven steals and four blocks. If you translate that to the players who actually just won the game for us, I mean, if we're just being honest here, Isaiah Thomas and Corey Brewer, Brewer was there anyone going to be else? But let's take a look at who was actually grabbing a lot of our rebounds. As we had Damian Jones with six rebounds in that in that game. And yo, Zhao Kui, 10 rebounds as a bronze, man. This card was just an absolute machine for us. So GG to him, GG to my opponent. That was a good game. So yeah, here is our final version of our Monopoly lineup for Game 1 and Episode 1. This is obviously going to only get better as the season goes on in terms of rolling the dice and upgrading the lineup. But to start out with a victory with an all-bronze squad only being upgraded by two players, considering we had three rolls, I'm pretty proud of that. We only added the kind of the little guy himself, Isaiah Thomas, and this Corey Brewer card I thought would be able to shoot the three ball a lot better. So hopefully we can actually pick up a better kind of swing man for the small forward. But game one with a victory adds an extra dice roll to episode two. Let's jump back to the board for a final debrief. So taking a look at the board where we're at now, because we got the victory, that will entitle us to four dice rolls next episode. And where we are looking at right now, if we do land on, say, the Ruby or the Amethyst, or really anywhere coming up, it is going to upgrade our lineup, which is only going to be better for us as we kind of continue down the season. And look, if we can actually somehow end up on the Galaxy Opal or Pink Diamond, in kind of episode two, I'm just going to be blown away. But here is my Monopoly NBA 2K19 episode one for Stadium 180. If you did enjoy it, make sure you smash that like button down below. I am also going to throw in a nice little bonus that for every one like we get on this video, I am going to add an extra bonus 100 MT just to start out with. So this is where I really appreciate your support because your MT that you generate from liking it is obviously going to make this team better. And that's what I do it for. A brand new content for my fans. So yeah, that's kind of like me done for episode one. If you have any extra rules that you want to add or any different cards that you want to add to the board as well, just make sure you comment down below. That's enough for me. Apologies if this is a long video, but I was just super hyped to actually edit, make the board, bring it to life and actually get some gameplay footage for you. So that's enough talking for me in episode one. I cannot wait to see you all in episode two and I'll catch you then. See ya.